All right, folks, it's about that time again for us to take a deep dive into some metrics and see how markets are looking at the moment. We have uh, MVRV here. We'll look at some stable coin uh, relevant metrics to get an idea of, you know, what UST looks like now after their big fallout, the USDT scare that's mostly recovered and how that's looking like right now. And then some general Bitcoin metrics, uh, and we'll we'll try to just go through them in 10 to 15 minutes here. Uh, but beginning with our MVRV divergence chart, uh, this is of course a Sandsheets model that anyone with Sandbase Pro has access to. You can look at, of course, the 30-day MVRV, which we'll analyze here in just a moment. But you also have access to comparing one-day MVRVs, seven-day, uh, 90, six-month, or one year, and then. <coughs> I'll show the danger and opportunity divergence tab there in just a moment. But first and foremost, just to give a basic idea of how this 30-day MVRV uh, chart layout works is you want to simply look at how underbought or how overbought uh, any asset is. And when things are negative, especially below negative 15% on the 30-day MVRV here, uh, that typically is a sign that uh, traders are way underwater. The average trading returns are struggling right now in a market where normally it's a zero-sum game and 30-day MVRV, just like any other time interval here, uh, tends to even out to 0% given enough time. We've really been, as you would expect, uh, with a six-month downturn in mostly negative number ranges for quite a long time now uh, since pretty much going back to late November after things really began to drop off dramatically from the early November all-time highs for Bitcoin and Ethereum and several other assets. So um, this has been the norm for quite a while, but getting below 20% for a lot of these altcoins, these are pretty extreme ranges, especially the ones in like negative 30% range. We can see REN there, uh, the graph, the, sa the sandbox token, uh, Phantom is way down. Um, and there's several, you know, down in the 25 to 30 range, negative 25 to negative 30 range, like Binance Coin, Celsius, uh, lots of different assets. You can, of course, make a copy of this Sandsheets model and then go to the data tab and actually plug in your own assets if you choose. So you can just change it here in row one, uh, get rid of Bitcoin and type in another slug. Um, and they're all listed here under column D. So you can look through thousands of different assets, Plug in the ones you'd like to look at. Remember that MVRV data is limited to ERC-20 assets for the most part, outside of a few exceptions uh, like Binance Coin, Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and a few others. But uh, over here, we can look at how all of the timeframes together can combine uh, and show just how underbought versus overbought an asset is based on how much pain traders are in. Uh, right now, there are several here that are above this green opportunity zone dashed line. This means that we're in a top 5 to 10% range in terms of the least risky times to buy or add on to your positions because of how much down uh, downswings people experienced in their portfolios over time. So Ren, for example, once again, looks like it's it's the most underbought on this chart when combining 1, 7, 30, 90, 180, and 365-day MVRV intervals all together. Uh, you've got scale way up there, Phantom, Celsius. And then, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum are still re very relevant. Uh, we got, you know, a few of these got all the way up to like 3.0 um, right after the big drop about two weeks ago after the FOMC announcement and crypto and equity all dropped in tandem. So there could be some further pain, but generally any assets that get above this green dash line, it means they're close to bottoms, uh, historically speaking. It's not investment advice, of course, and there could be anomalies and huge exceptions and things that have never happened. But more often than not, you see turnarounds around the time that these underbought dash lines are um, breached. So Bitcoin here looks to be semi-underbought. It's about halfway 
to that opportunity zone. It's certainly a, a less risky than usual because even risk would be right here at zero. And this whole region, you can see none of the assets on this model are occupying it at all, showing that we're nowhere near danger zone areas for any of them because none have seen serious profit really in any time intervals outside of a few exceptions you see in these seven day divergences because the past week wasn't too bad for a lot of assets. But even then, most seven day uh, returns for traders are in the negatives, which is why they're showing to be an opportunity zone land here. So Bitcoin's looking halfway there. Ethereum is about two thirds of the way there at 0.66 uh, with 1.0 being that extreme territory. So keep that in mind. And uh, this tells me that altcoins could have some short term relief coming up in the near future. Again, not investment advice. We don't predict where prices will go next. We simply look at the historical likelihood of when we are in the situation that we're in now, uh, how often they tend to occur. And it is very common that turnarounds begin to uh, occur for these assets that are in extreme underbought ranges. So that's MVRV. Now we'll move on over to stable coins and some Bitcoin whale insights. So beginning with USDT, obviously we had that big, big, uh, event occur about just a little over a week ago, right around here, we saw that USDT unpegged from its normal dollar value and got down to about 95 cents. This was after UST, the associated stable coin with uh, Terra Luna, which is more or less looking to be defunct now. UST dropped to about 29 cents. Uh, after it normally sits at a dollar, just like USDT and any other uh, American uh, dollar stable coins are intended to do. So when that happened, USDT kind of had a little bit of collateral damage uh, and fell a bit as well. But look at how whales have been reacting to it. This, this shows the amount of supply in terms of percentage of the total supply held by $100,000 addresses all the way up to $10 million addresses. And they were holding at a peak about 35%, just below 35%. And they were on the, on the way to increasing their buying power, which was looking really good. But obviously there was a big drop off right around here, the sixth, seventh, eighth, uh, I guess you could say all the way back on the third when the FOMC uh, announcement was made. But about five, six, seven days later, uh, that's when we really started to see the big drop off. And now, they're down to holding just 31%. So that's a big, big drop off. That means the uh, sharks or whales, depending on what you call addresses holding between 100,000 to $10 million, that's a very large range, but they, they've they dropped a total of 4% of the entirety of Tether's supply. And that's going to smaller holders collectively. It also is a few 10 million plus addresses that are mostly just exchange addresses, which why which is why they aren't included here. So that's very interesting to see, uh, and they it, it, this doesn't look like it was just temporary FUD, even though Tether's price has almost fully recovered. It's at like 99.8 cents now, but whales don't care. They are getting out of USDT and are pretty spooked now, uh, and that's not a great sign because obviously without USDT, uh, you would expect that they're either moving their coins into another stable coin, which we're seeing a little bit of evidence of, or they're adding on to you know, their Bitcoin or altcoin holding, holdings. Um, some altcoin holdings are going up, but not really at an extreme rate to justify all of this loss and dumping that whales are doing on Tether. And so you would think, okay, maybe they are funneling their money into Bitcoin, but that's not the case either because we can see that here, the yellow line, uh, which indicates the 100 to 10,000 Bitcoin addresses is also continuing to go down. And it's actually at uh, at least a year low. I think it might be close to a two year low. Let me check. So no, nowhere near a two year low, but it is a one year low. Um, the Those whales, and these are all, you know, millionaire to almost billionaire addresses here. Um, they are holding about 47.36% of the supply now after being at a peak of around 49.5%. So 
a little over 2% of the supply has been dumped by these key whales who really control the markets. And you can see that when they're going down, prices tend to go down. When they start to rise, prices eventually rise too. When they start to dump, you know, give it a week or two, is even on all-time high levels, they eventually dump very quickly if the whales are uh, taking profit themselves. You could see it here and you could see it here. Quite clearly, prices reacted. They climbed a little further before really falling further down. Uh, and it happened twice. <clears throat> and you can even call this kind of a third time just recently at the beginning of May here <clears throat> where it was looking like they were starting to climb again. And then boom, they got absolutely, the price got absolutely hammered as whales were dumping themselves. So we'd really like to see this pick up. The last time it was this low, we can see was right around November 1st of 2020. Give or take, we're at a one year, eight month, so 20 month low in terms of the amount of holdings that Bitcoin whales uh, collectively have. So that's gonna be a concern for sure. We can also look at jumping back to stable coins here for just a moment the amount of uh, supply that's sitting on exchanges. And I mentioned other stable coins to see if there might be a, a merge over to a new stable coin in terms of what, what whales are holding right now, um, or just the general amount that is on exchanges versus off exchanges for some of these stable coins. So we can look at them one at a time. The highlighted one with, with a shaded area chart here would of course be Tether. Uh, and we can see that it has moved up substantially in terms of the percentage of supply. Almost a third of Tether's supply now sits on exchanges after the uh, debacle of the past seven to 10 days uh, with all of the, uh, of course, the, the unpegging of $1 being the big spook that is causing people to take their, their funds out of cold wallets or DeFi or wherever else, wherever else loan wallets and put them on exchanges for the purpose of likely moving them into something, either cashing them out for fiat or potentially purchasing coins, uh, Bitcoin, altcoins, etc., which could be a good event. We never know. It's, it's out of fear, which is never good because they don't trust Tether right now. Um, but we can see if we go back to a year and a half, So Tether is at its highest ratio in the last year and a half. Let's go back way, way to 2018 and see if there was a time that Tether supply was this high. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, if we go back to what looks like late April 2020, that's the last time that Tether had this much on exchanges. And this isn't exactly a correlation to, to Bitcoin by any means, but we do see that... Uh, when the amount of Tether on exchange is going down, it actually correlates sometimes with a downturn, but eh, it, it can kind of go both ways, right? Like we really want to just look for really large swings. And right now, this latest large swing of Tether going to supply is coinciding with a downturn in Bitcoin. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And it's just something to keep an eye on if you have a lot of Tether yourself, um, the trust level for it appears to be low. Looking at a few others, we can see USDC is also dumping big time in terms of the amount on exchanges. This isn't a bad thing though. Remember, if, if there's more of the supply being moved into cold wallets, it simply means that people trust uh, that asset and, and are preserving it in a safe place for uh, when they plan on using it again. So the trust in USDC is high, but it also means that they don't have a lot of buying power uh, indicating they might be just about to make a big crypto purchase that could bump up prices. Uh, BUSD is fairly flat at the moment. That would make sense. This tends to be a lot more stable because obviously uh, the, the very large majority of BUSD is held on only one exchange, and that's Binance, the biggest exchange in the world. Uh, DAI does appear to be having a huge downturn. So it's, it's interesting to see, like... Um, these are USDC is the second largest and DAI is the fourth largest in terms of volume for stable coins right now. And they're both having big dumps. Uh, I shouldn't say dumps, just uh, excavations of coins moving from exchanges to cold wallets, 
while Tether is having that big increase uh, on two exchanges. TUSD, obviously, uh, it's it's not as big of a stable coin, but it does appear to have had a little bit of zigzagging going on. Nothing too much uh, to note there. And then, of course, UST has had a very, very wild uh, few weeks here after the debacle where its price went down to uh, below 30 cents and has since recovered some. Uh, we can see here, let me just get rid of the others for a moment. I want to zoom in on UST a little further. So, yeah, UST is kind of doing what was kind of doing what uh, Tether is doing now, and it's increasing. It increased its supply all the way up to 67% after being as low as 46 and a half. So this was a massive amount of tokens moving to exchanges uh, for the purpose of getting rid of those tokens, because obviously no one was trusting it during its time of moving, uh, of of depegging from the one dollar uh, threshold that it's supposed to normally sit at. So that's a quick recap on stable coins. And then last but not least, let's look at Bitcoin and Ethereum supply and exchange and get an idea of what they are doing. Bitcoins had a big swing upward that occurred right after the FOMC announcements on the 3rd and 4th. A uh, huge amount that brought their supply and exchanges back up to about 10.4%, which was the largest in about two months. And it had, it's since moved back off a little bit, which is a good sign means that basically when, when you're talking about non-stable coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum, the less on exchanges is typically better because it means there is less risk of future major sell-offs. There's much more likelihood that, you know, 14% of Bitcoin supply being on exchanges, that's that's 4% more of exchanges of, of Bitcoin on exchanges that can be sold off at any time and cause a dramatic drop in price. So there is at least less risk now of future major sell-offs happening, especially all at once. Uh, Ethereum is appearing to increase again, but it's not a sizable one. We've seen very similar rises back in late February as well as early December. So it, not a serious concern there. This one was, though, if we were watching Bitcoin's supply and exchange rise uh, about one to two weeks ago, that would be a sign that... Uh, Prices may be very volatile around that time, and that's indeed what happened. We saw kind of a little bit of hovering right here, and then a further dump getting all the way down to, I believe it was like 26K on the 12th, 11th or 12th, depending on what time zone you're in. Uh, so with things leveling out, not a bad sign, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on this along with stable coins. I'm very interested to see just how far down whales supply on tether will go and the exchange supply in terms of how how long it'll take before the influx of tether moving to exchanges uh, continues before it finally levels off and and stays stable stays stable no pun intended so that's just a quick recap on a few things guys i hope you're all having a good wednesday or thursday otherwise and i can't wait to chat with all of you along with maxim on Friday at 2 p.m. UTC. Take care and stay safe.